Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 17th March 2018. I am Saganandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, a company based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, or more importantly, how it can help in your trading, you may visit the website superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on Superior Profit's trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, in today's webinar, we look at key commodities, oil and gold, using technical charts. These tend to impact related stocks. A rising tide lifts all boats. When the broad market goes up, it tends to bring many stocks along with it. That is the reason we keep in mind the state of the broad market. We study that using NASDAQ and NYSE market breadth and also technical analysis of the four broad market ETFs. Industry rotation shows whether an industry is strong at present or is weak. If we can align our trades with the industry's strength or weakness, it adds additional edges to our trades favor. That is why we study industry rotation using QH industry scorecard and heat map. Along the way, we may go through some of the trade ideas shared in traders forum and certainly look for potential trades for the coming week. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. We are looking at oil using the USO ETF. We are looking at it using weekly backdrop chart and daily hop on chart. Together we call this at a glance template because it helps us decide if there is a trade opportunity at the right edge of the chart in only a few seconds. Last week, in the market roundup, we saw that oil was inside a triangle pattern. It was below this memory resistance line and above the memory support lines in a triangle pattern. So we were not going to take any trade at that time. On Friday, it broke out of the triangle pattern in the upward direction. Right now, price is above the three direction lines magenta cyan and yellow what direction line is also below price it broke out of the triangle pattern so probably the likely direction of oil from here is upward it has a cyan colored candle in the daily chart however there is no trend following go with flow trade setup because the weekly color is still magenta we also see that in the daily chart it is not having higher highs it has higher lows but not higher highs therefore in the daily chart it is not in uptrend because it is not in uptrend we are not going to apply the unambiguous checklist for the go with flow trade setup at the right edge therefore we have no swing trade setup at the right edge of this chart. For day trading, as the likely direction seems to be upward, one may take 
day trades only in the long direction using real time fine tune chart. What about gold? In the last market roundup, we discussed gold was not also in any clear trend. It was bound by memory resistance at the top and watermark resistance at the bottom. Gold declined a little bit as we can see from the weekly candle. The shape is bearish, the color is also bearish in the weekly chart. However, it continues to be inside the triangle pattern. The range is becoming narrower and narrower. Coming to the end of the triangle, we are going to wait for gold to break out of this pattern either upward or downward to be more clear about the direction before taking our next trade. Every week we study market break using NYSE composite index on the right hand side and NASDAQ composite index on the left hand side both using weekly charts. We study the indices along with three pairs of internals, new high low at the top, advanced decline in the middle and up down volume at the bottom. Because this study is using broad indices and also weekly longer term interval it is to be used more for longer term investment decisions not for swing trading so much and certainly not for day trading in the last market roundup i had mentioned that though nasdaq broke above the last all-time high made a new all-time high it was an uncertain time I mentioned that because of the flip-flop of the sectors of the last seven weeks at that time, six of the weeks had seen either all sectors up or all sectors down. That was massive flip-flop showing that the market players were not sure about where the market will go. That caution was well-timed. This week, both NASDAQ and NYSE fell. NASDAQ went below the watermark resistance line in the weekly chart. Therefore, it created a false upside breakout. However, the weekly candle color remained green, that is bullish. For NYSE, Last week the candle color was bullish, this week it dropped and the candle color turned bearish. NYSE couldn't go above previous week's high one week ago and this week it declined further. Though both NASDAQ and NYSE declined, the declines are short with very narrow range weekly candles. This doesn't give us any clarity on where the market will go. What about the internals? Earlier when the market was going up in this area, the new high lows were important in pushing price higher and higher. For a number of weeks now, the new high lows had not been that strong. This week, NYSE new high low declined and went below zero. NASDAQ new high low declined, though it closed above zero. Of the six internals, five declined. Only one went up, that is the up-down volume of NYSE. And other than new high low of NYSE, everything closed above zero. What does it show? It shows that the market decline, however, on balance, volume of stocks going up exceeded volume of stocks going down in NYSE at least. And, and NASDAQ also. NASDAQ declined, but it still closed above zero for up down volume. How is that possible? That is possible if the lower priced stocks are moving up and the higher price stocks which were at or near all time high they weakened so the stronger stocks at least some of them weakened declining the new high lows 
it is possible that some of the sectors that were languishing they went up when doing our sector analysis we will drill down more into that we are now studying the broad market ETFs using Q at a glance template we are studying SPY now in the weekly chart SPY reversed from cyan bullish color to magenta bearish color this is same as what we saw in case of NYSE broad market index this week price tried to go above the watermark resistance line immediately reversed with a bear release signal that was on Tuesday and continued to decline for the remaining three days the weekly candle color and shape both are bearish however in the daily chart price is very close to the memory support line overall price is moving in a kind of triangle pattern narrow range it is going closer and closer to the tip of the candle until it breaks out of the candle the direction is not clear the weekly candle shape and color both are bearish but because it is right on top of the memory support in daily we are not going to take any short trade and because the weekly color is bearish we are not going to take any long trade either so there is no swing trade opportunity on SPY right now QQQ last week it made a new all-time high this week price reversed however with a narrow range candle as was the case for Nasdaq broad market index and the candle color of QQQ remained cyan that is bullish Nasdaq broad market index made a false upside breakout however QQQ couldn't QQQ closed just above the watermark resistance line and in the daily chart similar to SPY it closed just on top of the memory support this again shows that the direction of QQQ is not clear it is probably more likely that it will go up because of the support in daily chart and also because of the fact that in weekly it closed above the watermark resistance which could act as support still there is no swing trade opportunity neither in long direction nor in short direction right now dia this was the only ETF that couldn't break outside the triangle pattern in daily and it is continuing inside the same triangle pattern again dia is right on top of the memory support line it is coming very close to the tip of the triangle because it is above the memory support just above memory support we are not going to take any short trade and weekly color is magenta so we are not going to take any long trade what about IWM last week IWM was the second strongest ETF it came very close to the previous all-time high this week it tried to go up came very close to the watermark resistance in weekly and went down from there however it has a lower tail in weekly and upper tail as well the lower tail was caused by the IWM's move up on Friday in the weekly chart it has cyan color in the daily chart next week if it starts to go up and gives a cyan color candle then it will give us a go with flow long trade opportunity for the week IWM is the strongest among the four broad market ETFs it also went down we can see from the weekly candle that it closed below previous week's close we also know that from the red color of the weekly activity bar it went down from previous week's close however it went down less than SPY, QQQ and DIA also from the relative performance line 
in the weekly chart we can clearly see that it is tilting upward that is it it is outperforming broad market this is also the only ETF broad market ETF that had heavy activity on Friday no other ETF had heavy activity on Friday or any day of the week for that matter so if we are going to take any swing trade in any of the broad market ETFs next week it is going to be using IWM and in the long direction provided the go with flow long trade setup is confirmed using the unambiguous checklist overall the broad market indices the internals and the broad market ETFs don't give us confidence on the overall trend of the market however we can always find opportunities both for long term as well as swing trading using top down analysis or bottom up analysis aligning strengths of industry fundamentals and technicals and we will do that right now every week we analyze 11 sectors across three review periods red bar represents performance of this week green bar performance of one week prior to red bar and blue bar performance of two weeks prior to green bar together they constitute four weeks or about one month of performance any bar to the right of the zero point indicates the sector went up and any bar to the left of zero point indicates the sector went down last week all the sectors went up however i mentioned caution because of the flip-flop of the sectors from week to week this week the flip-flop is continuing not all sectors went down but nine of the 11 sectors declined from telecom to materials to consumer discretionary only two sectors went up these are utilities and real estate if we use QA sector heat map we will see that both utilities and real estate were lagging for long time last week also I mentioned that when sectors and industries lag for long time we start looking for potential longs both for long term as well as swing trade opportunities we had identified several stocks earlier in these sectors and their industries they are doing well and we could locate more trading opportunities this week let's go to industry analysis and identify them this is the list of the 10 best performing industries of this week it is essential to carry out top-down analysis from industry level and not from sector or market level why because the sector and market levels tend to aggregate a lot to pinpoint forces that are supporting a stock's move we need to start from industry analysis this week's best performing industries also support this theory if we look at the consumer discretionary as a sector the sector was strong and in heat map we can see it we can debit therefore if we are looking only at sector level then we might not consider taking any new long position and of course at market level we just saw using market breadth and broad market ETF study that there is no clear direction so market or sector level analysis will tell us not to take any new long in consumer discretionary sector however four of the best performing industries are in consumer discretionary these are automobiles automobile manufacturers multi-line retail and housewares and specialties not only are they best performing using QH, we can see that they are strengthening. We can see that immediately from the heat map. Because they were weak earlier, now strengthening, we can find stocks that are optimally valued and look for potential longs using Q charts. 
we could actually identify this star to power where TUP. It has excellent valuation, very nice dividend yield percentage, earnings quality is high. We could identify all this using Q vital statistics, drilling down from the houseware and specialties industry. TUP gave a bounce long trade setup on this Thursday, 15th March, and went up by 1% on Friday. It is still at pendulum low, that is at an attractively low price level. This opportunity could be identified using top-down analysis, drilling down in QH from industry to stocks, or it could also be found using QSonar program, the program that can identify stocks at pendulum low and starting to reverse. Either way, we could find TUP, look at its industry strength, fundamental strength, technical strength, and probably take the trade. The opportunity is still there. Let's use QH, study the sector heat map little bit and also the best performing industries, drill down into houseware and specialties, look into Tupperware's fundamentals and finally look at Tupperware's technical charts. That will show us how easily in a systematic way we can identify very profitable, potentially profitable trade opportunity quite easily. Every time we open QH, it analyzes 11 sectors and more than 170 industries across 12 monthly review periods and more frequently for recent periods of 10 days, 5 days, 2 days and 1 day. Let's go to the sector panel, sort the sectors over 5 days from smallest to largest. That will bring the weakest sectors to the top, strongest ones to the bottom. For every review period, age assigns a score, one to the weakest one, large number to the strongest one. Also applies a heat map, magenta to the weakest one, cyan to the strongest one, color gradient to all the ones in between. Using this scorecard and heat map, instantly we can see which sectors are weak now. Materials is weak, which ones are strong, utilities and real estate. It also shows which ones were weak earlier. Real estate and utilities were weak for a long time and very nicely gradually transitioning from magenta to cyan, that is transitioning from weakness to strength. The analysis that is done for the 11 sectors is done for the 170 plus industries. To find the strongest industries of the week, we sort over the primary five days period largest to smallest and we see houseware and specialties. This is an industry that was weak for long time. Now changing color to cyan, it is cyan over the primary five days period. We say five days period is the primary period because we make entry decisions both for long term investment as well as swing trading using this five days period score and color. To drill down into the industry, we can click the drill down button. Okay, <laughs> this is not connected, so it's not able to drill down. I earlier checked that Tupperware has very nice valuation. And one way we can confirm that is to go to our market menu, go to stock scorecard USA and filter for the stocks of houseware and specialties. We have this stock NWL. This is optimally valued. Tupperware is not appearing in this list but Tupperware was also optimally valued. Why it is not appearing in the list is probably it is not in the list of these 1600 plus stocks that are included in the stock scorecard. If you check out Tupperware's fundamentals you will see it also has cyan color in relative and internal value. So it has very nice valuation and Tupperware's earnings quality is also high. It pays a nice dividend as well. Let's look at Tupperware's technical charts. This is technical chart of Tupperware using at a glance template. It dropped heavily. 
how far at the right edge that is where we need to make trading decisions it gave us a bounce long trade setup in the weekly chart there is a watermark support level coming from far away earlier that acted as a very nice support price tried to go below that level immediately reversed and went up went up significantly over time at the right edge of the chart price came precisely to that level this price level in the weekly chart the level of this watermark support 47.6 something is also the level where price came to in the daily chart tried to go down and reversed on thursday it had an up day with very high activity wednesday was down day with very high activity so on thursday when it also gave a bull release signal this cyan cross it met all the requirements of a bounce long trade setup remember bounce long trade setup is the only setup that doesn't require the candle color to be yellow or cyan it allows us to take a long trade ignoring the color so long as closing price of the signal day is above the previous day's close which is true because this activity bar was in green color and price came to a deep watermark level and bounced up from there therefore we could take a long trade at close of thursday itself put stop just below recent low and if it covers risk distance maybe at this level or maybe at the memory resistance level we could book partial profit and try to hold on to the remaining position to let profit run because we are observing the industry strength which is cyan now the stock's fundamental strength which is optimal valuation and now it came to a bounce long trade setup we will be able to take this trade without waiting for the first trend following trade setup first trend following trade setup will take some time it has to go up break this memory resistance till down and then go up again we are able to catch much lower price by using bounce trade setup in this case i think this has a good long opportunity even now among the best performing industries we see there are multiple utilities industries electric utilities gas utilities multi utilities three of them utilities as a sector was weak and now turning up therefore you may keep an eye on these industries or other utility stocks looking for potential turning around one way to do that is to run the sonar at pendulum low and reversing at the end of regular topics i will try to run that sonar using trade station and look for some of the utility stocks that are identified in there another industry is interesting coal and consumable fuels it is the best performer went up by more than 8% in one week very large percentage gain we will come back to this industry when looking at the accelerating industries and we will be able to identify some very interesting possible long opportunities we are now looking at the 10 worst performing industries of this week material sector is weakening in the heat map three of the worst performing industries are in this sector diversified chemicals fertilizers and agricultural chemicals and commodity chemicals all of them are related to chemicals you may be cautious about long positions in these industries and the sector as a whole few days ago i had shared a possible short trade idea in another materials industry steel industry the stock was us steel x and i shared it just after us government announced tariff on steel import common traders may be thinking that steel companies will go up 
However, at that time I saw that the sector was weakening, industry was weakening, the stock was also at very high level and broke below a memory support in daily chart. After that, it went down nicely. Steel industry has dropped further this week. Let's look at US Steel's chart and before that look at the steel industry using QH. We can start with sectors, go to materials, drill down into the materials industries. We have all the materials industries here. We can sort them over five days, weakest to strongest. Steel industry which was clearly cyan before and it is weakening gradually over five days. The scorecard color is magenta, so it is weak. UST was a stock in this industry. I identified it as potential short when the industry was already starting to weaken. Let's look at the technical charts. When I identified the potential trade, it had displayed very scheduled in the weekly chart and there was a memory support in daily. On this candle, it broke that memory support. It had a long lower tail, so I thought that would not be the right day to enter the trade. The short trade could be taken next day using fine-tuned chart. If we use fine-tuned chart, we could see that it tried to go above early range high, but reversed. It reversed with heavy activity, and it gave a bear release signal. That would be a possible short trade with very minuscule stop loss. It closed lower from the entry price on that day and after that it continued to fall down. When price came to the yellow direction line, more than risk distance was covered, so at least partial profit could be booked. This is again another example where Instead of relying on media news, we could use the industry's weakness in QH and the stock toppling over in the Q charts to take a very low risk short trade and make profit. As the industry is weakening, we don't have to exit full position. Partial position may be held with trailing stop in a way that the entire trade is risk free from now onward. Another industry that did badly is home entertainment software. It is the worst performer of this week going down by more than 5%. This home entertainment software industry was very strong in Q scorecard and now the worst performer. Therefore. It is wise to be cautious about holding long positions. There are two stocks, Activision Blizzard, ATVI and Tech2, TTWO. Both are medium valued regarding fundamentals and turning down from pendulum high in Q charts. They are showing clear weakness on Q charts. There may not be any short signal, but if you are holding long position, it may be better to book some profit or at minimum protect profit applying stop order. Let's look at these two stocks but before that let's look at the industry in QH, look at the stocks fundamentals and then at their charts as well. Home entertainment software. QH immediately shows using color coding that it was strong earlier, now weakened very fast from 157 to 115 to 18 to 1 now. Over 5 days, over this week is the worst performer. We are using stock scorecard to locate the stocks of home entertainment software industry. We see Activision Blizzard and Take 2. These are medium valued. They are not optimal valued. On the other hand, EA, Electronic Arts, is optimally valued. It has cyan color in relative valuation so we are not going to look for short setup on EA. We could look for short setup on ATVI or Tech2. This is ATVI using at a glance chart. In weekly, it has a very bearish shape candle, bearish color candle 
and an engulfing candle. It also tried to go above the watermark resistance that was created by the earnings week and failed, creating a false upside breakout and this week price came down with heavy activity. This is clearly a bearish pattern. It is a regular trick of the bigger players to take a stock above the previous resistance. So after earnings, some people shorted it. When price went above the watermark resistance, those shorts will cover. Also the breakout traders who were waiting for this watermark breakout to go long would have gone long on this candle. And that would be an opportunity for the bigger players to offload their stocks at a higher price. It is clear that the bigger players offloaded their stocks because the weekly activity is very high and it has a very nice engulfing pattern in the weekly chart. In the daily chart, price tried to go above the same watermark reverse from there. It also closed below the level where bearish headwind had come earlier. Right now it has already dropped reasonably from the recent high. So we are not going to take a short trade right now. That would make the stop loss far away. Instead if price goes up little bit and tilts down. That may give us the first go with flow short trade opportunity in ATVI. We will take that if the industry is also continuing to weaken at that time. Take 2 is also clearly bearish in the weekly chart. It had a bearish headwind signal on the earnings week. Price came below that. On this week, again another earnings week, price tried to go above that same watermark resistance level. That particular week closed with a very long upper tail and next week it fell more heavily with very heavy activity. So the up week was very heavy. The immediate next down week was also with very heavy activity. That is a clear bearish pattern. Then price tried to go up little bit and this week reversed again. Not an engulfing pattern but clear reversal pattern with a bearish shape candle that is long solid body and also bearish color. Price is close to the memory support in weekly. That may be one reason we are not going to short it right now. And in daily also there is a memory support right below price level. So we are not going to take any short trade right now. On Friday we see extreme high activity. In fact last couple of days 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 all the 5 days of this week has very or extreme high activity. Friday's activity is by far the biggest of all the days of the week. And it is resting right on top of the memory support. It may be that price will at least for a few days go up from here. However, we are not going to take any long trade because the weekly is clearly bearish. There is no long trade setup right now. We are not going to short also now because it is right on top of memory. We may wait for the next low risk short opportunity, especially if the industry continues to weaken. For both of these stocks, take two and Activision Blizzard. It would be wise to apply stop for any long position that is being held. Every week we also study the accelerating industries. They often end up being the best performers in subsequent weeks. We are looking at the 10 most accelerating industries and though only one real estate industry is among these 10 accelerators that is retail rates. If we use QH we will find many other real estate industries that are starting to turn around and the sector is also starting to turn around. I had shared this talk in Q Traders Community Independence Realty IRT 
on 13th March. Based on 360 degrees analysis, studying industry, fundamentals and technicals, it was a possible long opportunity. It is nicely going up from pendulum low, pays a very high dividend of 7.8%. Let's look at the idea that was posted in traders community. And then we look at the stocks chart as of today. This is the idea I shared in traders community. This real estate stock with high dividend yield went up from buy point. That was on 13th March. This is how the Q edge snapshot looked at that time. Clearly the residential rates. It was week earlier, deep magenta in the industry scorecard and was turning into strength. It was very weak, 4 out of more than 170 groups and over 5 days it came to 141. That's a big jump in strength. At that time I drilled down and found these stocks. IRT was one of the best valued stocks. In fact, it was the only one with cyan color both for relative value and internal value columns. At that time, it was paying a very high dividend, 8.13%. This is the at a glance template of IRT when I shared it. On this candle, it gave a cyan color candle. It was preceded by multiple bullish headwind signals. It was looking like starting to go up. So one could start looking for long opportunity from the end of this day. That was 12th March. 13th March it went up further. In the weekly, it was a very nice bullish shape as well as bullish color candle. Price came to long term support level. Tried to go below that reverse creating a false downside breakout. Very bullish candle in the weekly and price nicely going up in daily after displaying a sand color candle. That could be a trigger point to take a long trade. Very nice dividend, nice valuation and in my view very nice chart as well both for long term investment opportunity as well as swing trade opportunity. Let's look at IRT as of today. Since the day the stock was shared, it has continued to go up. As of Friday, it closed above the yellow direction line as well. Friday price went up with heavy activity. The weekly candle is clearly bullish, became more bullish since the time I shared it. If you closely look, this sand color candle actually broke this memory resistance level that was there at that time. So one could take a go with flow long trade setup at the close of this candle itself. Since then price has gone up. The industry is strengthening, fundamentals are strong, technically it is recovering from the bottom. This is the kind of stock we love to take both for long term investment as well as swing trading. For long term investment it is a very nice stock as well because it pays very high dividend. More than 8% when I shared the trade idea. I mentioned that we will relook coal and consumable fuels. This is the best performing industry of this week and it is also accelerating. The second strongest accelerating industry of this week. Again a very interesting stock Cloud Peak Energy CLD dot N. CLD is the ticker symbol. It has excellent earnings quality has potential for short squeeze. On Friday it broke out of daily memory resistance with heavy activity. In the weekly chart it is at long term support at a price level where bullish headwind had appeared earlier that moved price up. The daily is also displaying bullish headwind. It came a few days ago at the very bottom. Looking at industry strengthening as well as accelerating and the fundamental strength and the technical strength. This may be another nice buy opportunity similar to 
IRT in retail rates. To find the accelerating industries in QA, we can sort over page 5 days column, largest to smallest. Coal and consumer fuels is the second strongest accelerating industry. Let's look at the stocks of this industry using scorecard. Very disciplined, structured approach to find trade opportunities, isn't it? Easy as well as fun. If we look at the stocks in coal and consumable fuels industry using stock scorecard, you could do the same analysis using QH drill down that could be done in real time. We see instantly from color coding CLD, Cloud Peak Energy is the only one with optimal valuation. It has declined a lot, so we expect the growth to be poor, which is indeed true. That is fine if a stock is at optimal valuation and starting to go up on Q charts, that is a low risk entry opportunity, both for long term investment as well as swing trading. Let's look at the technical charts, Cloud Peak Energy using at a glance template. In the weekly chart, it came to the watermark support level from long time ago. There was a bullish headwind at that time. That held price pretty well, went up quite a lot. Now price came to the same level. It is also supported by a memory support. In weekly, it dropped fast. Actually broke some of these memory support levels but immediately reversed with a bull release signal. On the downside, it had very high activity. So it could point to possible exertion. And this week has a bullish shape candle with bull release signal. In the daily, it displayed a bullish headwind signal. Price is nicely supported by the memory support line. At the right edge, it broke above this memory resistance line that happened on Friday. Friday's candle shape turned cyan. Friday had very high activity in the daily chart. If we apply the unambiguous checklist for go with flow long trade setup, all the conditions are met except that the weekly candle color is not cyan yet. That is expected because it had a sharp drop. Because price is reversing from watermark as well as memory support, one may consider taking a long trade at the right edge, putting stop probably just below the memory as well as watermark support level. The industry is strong. Fundamentally, it has optimal valuation in weekly and daily. It has nice support, broke out on Friday. May be a good buy opportunity, isn't it? Let's look at the decelerating industries of this way. Five of the decelerating industries were strong for a long time and now showing signs of weakness. You may be careful about holding long positions in these industries. These are internet software and services, life science tools and services, industrial gases semiconductor equipment and casinos and gaming. In life science tools and services, I found this stock Bio Red Lab. Bio is the ticker symbol. It is fundamentally overvalued. Recently it had earnings and created a false upside breakout, both in weekly and daily. That is a bearish pattern. Daily also displayed bearish headwind. You may be cautious if you are having any long position in this stock. In casinos and gaming, this industry was also strong earlier, now weakening. We have two stocks, Monarch, MCRI and Charge Downs, CHDN. They are also fundamentally overvalued. EPS growth is slowing down. Both are within 10% of 52-week high. It may again be time to book profit in existing long position or tighten stop and look for potential shorts. Let's look at QH, look at the decelerating industries, look at life science tools and services and casinos and gaming and look at this 
three stocks bio red lab monarch and church towns in qh to look for the decelerating industries we sort over past five days smallest to largest the decelerating industries come to the top out of them casinos and gaming clearly it was sign earlier now weakening same is true for semiconductor equipment industrial gases life science tools and services and internet software many of them were strong earlier for long period of time and now decelerated also the five days code turned magenta not only did it decelerate which is showing up in the page five days column magenta color over five days the score itself declined enough to become bearish therefore i drill down let's look at life science tools and services first you know it is possible to download the file let me download it okay we have the stocks the 1600 plus stocks that we track in q scorecard let's look for life science we have multiple stocks we see the weak valued stocks in magenta color but our stock is not in this list fine if you use the real time drill down then you can find bio let's look at its technical charts bio in weekly chart had a watermark resistance level on the earnings week it tried to go above that ended with a very long upper tail candle subsequent week it again tried to go up and this week it reversed closed clearly below the watermark resistance in weekly thereby creating a false upside breakout there was heavy activity in the earnings week in daily we had false upside breakout precisely on the earnings day price tried to go above this watermark resistance and reversed candle color was still bullish cyan so we were not going to take any short rate at that time however when price came to this yellow colored candle tried to go above the watermark resistance again and reversed we could confidently take a short trade right on this candle at the close of this candle the short decision was also supported by a very headwind in the daily chart that so far is catching the top this could be taken as a possible very headwind trade as well as a sideways market that is double top box short trade setup by friday it has already covered more than risk distance so at least partial profit could be booked if a long position holder didn't exit yet it may be wise to put a stop loss to protect profit we had two stocks in casinos and gaming with similar characteristics overvalued stocks at very high level Let's look at only their technical charts MCRI and CHDN. MCRI is tilting downward in the weekly chart. In the daily chart, it recovered somewhat, broke some of the memory resistance levels, and at the right edge, gave us a red color candle. It has created lower high. It has created lower low as well so it is technically in downtrend if it goes down further from here it may give us a very low risk short trade opportunity the stock is fundamentally overvalued also chdn is another casino stock that is fundamentally overvalued it has displayed a bearish headwind in the weekly chart it has an inside candle this week very shape long solid body and bearish color in the daily chart it has a magenta color candle however there is no go with flow short trade setup because it is not in downtrend any long position holder who might have bought long time ago using qh drill down probably have very large profit if these memory levels are broken 
which will mean the yellow direction line will also be broken then those long-term investors could also protect profit right now there is no short trade opportunity one may wait for the memory supports to be broken before taking any short trade here that was the usual topics i mentioned we will try to locate possible long-term opportunities this is a way that we can use in all kinds of markets that is to look for stocks that are at pendulum low and reversing let's try to do that using q sonar let me open the search desktop both in q elite on trade station that we are using now as well as q global on meta stock we have this sonar stocks at pendulum low and reversing i already ran it and i found these stocks if we sort it on the industry we'll see multiple stocks are in utilities electric utilities to be specific remember we saw utilities as a sector was starting to improve let's go back to qh utilities it is the best performing sector of this week changed strength from score of 1 to score of 11 from the worst performer to the best performer isn't it nice to start looking for long opportunities if we drill down to the industries we see electric utilities was very weak earlier score 3 now 170 this week the sector is strengthening this specific industry is strengthening electric utilities and using Q sonar, we found three stocks LNT, SO, and ES. Let's try to find these stocks in Q scorecard. Not sure if they will be there, but let's try in electric utilities. We have these stocks in electric utilities from Q scorecard. We sort over relative valuation to find the optimally valued stocks. Let's delete the rest for now. So we have these stocks F E E X C A Y P P L E I X S O. We could look for potential long in these stocks, especially in E X C, which has cyan color in both relative and internal valuation, also in P P L. Let's look at E X C and P P L instantly. It seems like a nice chart pattern. In weekly, it came to this memory support line. And now gave a bullish shape and color candle in daily it was going down now created a higher low and about to create a higher high in fact using the industry's strength one could take a long trade right at the close of this sand color candle or maybe even on this sand color candle putting stop just below recent low or maybe below this memory support line it is going up from there it is somewhat away from the recent low so one may not take a long trade right now wait for a pullback and take a long trade possibly both for long term investment as well as swing trade the other stock was PPL. Here the stock dropped sharply in the weekly chart. Let's see if we have any support level on the left hand side. Doesn't seem to be. So this is still falling down sharply. We are not going to try any long trade in PPL right now. But it is optimally valued. We may keep it in our watch list and start to look for potential long in the EXC now itself. That was the top down approach. If we are using bottom up approach, then we would run Q sonar first. We'll identify these three stocks, LNT, SO, ES. Let's see if any of them has potential long trend. ES, a very nice chart pattern again. Instantly we can decide that. Came to the long term memory support coming from far far away memory supports are fantastic they may come from few days back to few years back magically automatically it also had a bullish headwind one week ago 
this week has a bullish shape candle color is still neutral in daily it tried to go below this watermark went up created a double bottom on friday it broke above this memory resistance with very high activity the patterns are bullish both in weekly and daily so one might start to look for long trade using qa you may check the stocks fundamentals if it is optimally valued or at least neutral in valuation then it could give a low risk buy opportunity while the industry is starting to strengthen what about the other two stocks instantly again very nice chart pattern it came to this very long term memory support broke it however in q elite we can see the broken memory lines and we see though it broke technically it broke it it immediately went up created a false downside breakout at a strong support level coming from far far away in the daily it is nicely tilting over sometimes people call it a bowl pattern as it does so it keeps on breaking memory resistance one after another you can see many memory resistances are broken and at the right edge there is no nearby memory resistance okay one is there which is at the bottom mark resistance level after that next memory is further how many traders trade is wait for the clear uptrend that means they will have to wait for price to break above this memory resistance as well but because we are combining industry strength fundamental strength and technical strength and we have multiple reversal trade setups we are able to take very low risk entry opportunities much earlier and by the time others think it is going to be an uptrend that is no more down trending memory lines by that time we could book partial profit this looks an interesting chart as well there was one more stock we found from bottom up approach using q sonar that was lnt again a very nice pattern in utli it came down heavily moved sideways for a while this week went up with very high activity very bullish shape and bullish color candle this week had earnings which had a very long lower tail next week it went down probably shaking out the weak hands one week ago it already created a kind of false downside breakout with bull release signal this week it strongly went up in daily chart we see as it started to tilt upward from earlier downtrend it kept on breaking memory resistances one after another and this is one stock where at the right edge there is no downtrending memory line it is open space only memory support lines are there price is above three direction lines only the y direction line is still tilting downward again other traders may wait for the y direction line to be broken whereas we could have taken a long trade earlier we are able to do that again because we are combining industry strength fundamental strength also waiting for a low risk technical buy point you could look at these stocks these three stocks that we found using u sona lnt s o n e s in electric utilities and look for their fundamentals before taking a long trade let's summarize last week in the market roundup i mentioned caution because of the flip flop of the sectors in spite of nasdaq breaking to all time high several other people suggested that the breakout will lead to further up move that was a possible hypothesis however the sector flip flops were not giving confidence also the fact that daya was inside triangle pattern and spy could not break above previous week's high were cautionary signs that was well timed this week 
all the broad market ETFs went down. However, by very narrow range candles in the weekly charts. This is not giving any clear bearish or bullish signal. Sector flip-flop is continuing. Nine of the sectors went down this week. Two went up and the two that went up were languishing for long time. Therefore, at market level, we have no clear signal. Sector level, we could start to look for potential longs for long term as well as swing trading in real estate and utilities. And drilling down in those sectors, we indeed find stocks which are optimally valued. Many of them have very nice dividend and starting to go up giving low risk buy opportunities. We found several such opportunities both using bottom up as well as top down approach. This is how using industry strength, fundamental strength and technical strength in all market conditions. We can find long term investment opportunities as well as swing trade opportunities easily, confidently and unambiguously. Nice, isn't it? <laughs> it's also fun. I think the colors are fun. Uh, makes, makes it fun, not boring to find the stock. Not funny, but fun. For funny, I watch Netflix. That's all that I plan to share in today's session. I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Have a great weekend and trade profitably.